मॉर्निंग सर गुड मॉर्निंग सर गुड मॉर्निंग सर लेट अस वेट फॉर फ्यू मिनट्स लेट आवर गेस्ट जॉइन द प्रोग्राम ओके सर A very good morning uh, to all delegates, our esteemed guests, and uh, all participants. Uh, I'd like to greet uh, our honourable uh, Vice Chancellor, Sir Professor B. Ghosh, our uh, honourable Dean, Sir uh, Professor Shushil Kumar Kothari, and our esteemed guest, uh, Dr. Dibakar Bhakto, scientist in uh, ICR C3, Mr. Borun Kumar Paul, Fishery Extension Officer. At Kishnog Block, Nodia, Mr. Shubhendu Haldar, and it's a we are all here on the on a joyous Sunday, and it's just not a simple or ordinary Sunday. It's 21st of November, and it's World Fisheries Day. In 1997, uh, World Fisheries Forum was formed, and around 18 countries across the globe joined the uh, forum and signed a consensus, consensus document. And their main motto was to develop the fisheries and include the fisheries community in the trade and the commerce. In 2015, an uh, international fisheries organization opened and formed 
on the on this very day 21st november and on the same day for, for the first time in 2015 on 21st november world fisheries day was started to celebrate and since then we are celebrating it with grace so today to make memorable and to celebrate uh, the world fisheries day we have from the department of fisheries we have arranged a national webinar on integrated development and management of fisheries so i am dr sudeshna sharkar assistant professor in department of fisheries the neotu university i'd like to request our honorable dean sir uh, to give a welcome remarks and welcome our esteemed guests and our vice chancellor sir thank you very much sir sir please thank you dr uh, sarkar with permission of uh, our vice chancellor sir uh, we would like to uh, welcome uh, today our uh, guest so uh, vice chancellor sir is here actually sudeshna vice chancellor sir is here uh, sir uh, he supposed to maybe Uh, let okay. me check sir okay okay let us uh, start it so uh, i thought if he is there with, uh, we can seek his permission to begin with uh, so uh, honorable uh, guest of the uh, day dr dibakar bhakto scientist uh, from sifri barakpur Dr. Borun Kumar Paul and uh, Mr. Subendu Haldar, both uh, fisheries extension officer working in district of Nadia. Our faculty members, participating students in the event, I program on the eve of International Fisheries Day. as uh, dr sarkar already mentioned the significance of the day why we are celebrating this is uh, very important for our students particularly to understand that why the day is celebrated and since when we are celebrating it the objectives because this has a very significant objective uh today we all are aware about the environmental responsibility of individual citizen and this our our scientists or the workers or the people related with the industry they thought of the significance of world fisheries day long back and they uh, provided a kind of action and since 2015 we are celebrating this particular day at neotia university i welcome all the friends in the event today on behalf of the neotia university as well as on behalf of department of fishery sciences school of agriculture and allied science for the guest i would like to mention that this is one of the school uh, among eight different schools operating under neotia university the name of the school is a school of agriculture and allied sciences and under that uh, we have two uh, different disciplines one is agriculture and another is fishery science the fishery science department started working in 2019 and uh, this is currently we are in the third year we have all uh, required faculty members as well as the different labs and field infrastructure in place to run the 
particular DFSC program following the ICAR, Indian Council of Agriculture Research uh, syllabus, course curriculum, guidelines, and all of that. So, sustainability is important not only in agriculture, in fisheries, or in any sector. The way we are causing damage to our environment, many, many people are really concerned. And therefore, we have arranged a series of lectures today. That is, uh, the first one will be delivered by Dr. Divakar Bhakta, scientist from Sifri, that is on Hilsa conservation in Bhagirathi Hugli River, threats and future plan. The second one will be Mr. Borun Kumar Paul, fishery extension officer on socio-economic upliftment of fisher folks through fishermen's cooperative societies in Nadia district. The third one will be by Mr. Subendu Haldar, fishery extension officer again working in uh, Nadia district, Tehatto. His talk will be on integrated development of fisheries through species diversification and participation of FPG and SHG. All the three topics are very much relevant uh, considering the significance of the day. Other than these uh, presentations, we have a series of presentations by our students. I am particularly happy that our students are participating in a very big way in this particular event. Uh, in fact, uh, we can say that this is an event for the students and by the students. Uh, a documentary presentation followed by a seminar on different topic by our students are there in the session too. And at the end, it will, um, uh, it will, uh, it will end uh, before that there is a cultural event. That also is being organized by our students. So re really, it's a very happy moment for all of us. And without uh, much delay, I would like to thank once again Dr. Sorkar for giving me this opportunity, as well as uh, to our uh, fishery science faculty members. I wish a grand success of the event that we are organizing today. Thanks once again to all of you. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot, sir, for your encouraging speech, which will drive us to carry on the program till the end. Uh, with us, our uh, honorable uh, senior professor, Professor uh, B.C. Shaha is there. So I'd like to request uh, with the due permission of our Honorable Dean, uh, please, sir, uh, uh, say a few words regarding uh, our program. It would be a great pleasure for us. And Yes, Dr. Shaha, please. First of all, I must thank you profusely, my dear students, for organizing such a webinar to uh, can the need of the far fishery farmers, particularly in our own state, and in general for the district of South Chobis Parganas, which is you know surrounded by rivers and seas. At the outset, I must thank our dean, Dr. S. K. Kothari, for his opening remarks. And as you all know. We are losing the different species of feces in our country as well as in the world. If you remember, there were many types of fish, many germplasm of fish, different types, different shapes, different shapes. And I believe that those genotypes must be conserved and some attention should be given to conserve these uh, you know, genotypes which are almost uh, in danger. 
so an attempt or some project must be written on the icar uh, no, we have to draw their kind attention so that these species particularly the inland species species in the, our sweet water field species could be observed and there is a necessity for that if we lose this diverse germplasm and in fact we are almost losing it there may be a great danger if we start monoculturing or maybe culturing of fish with two three species like katla ruhu maybe mrigel maybe maybe 10 or 15 species then there might be some danger and there there will be some genetic loss and once they are lost they cannot be regained so my dear students as well as the organizers and the members from this inland fishery sciences barakpur i request you rather i would like to draw your kind attention that some steps something should be done right at this moment so that we can conserve those species secondly we have to consider the need of our fish growers or particularly those who are involved in fish production that there should not be you know killing or destruction of fish species uh, from the pond as well as from the seas if you if you visit the sea side or the river side you will see that there will be some fishermen they will catch fish and those fish which are not of interest to them they will just throw it away or they will dry on the river side or maybe in the in the sea shore so those points have also been considered some air canning program must be there that if you do not harvest those fish which are of, of no need for your farmers for commercial fishes please see that they are not killed they are again allowed to be in the habitat where they were caught so i am not a man of fisheries but whatever i understand from this day the objective of this day that there should be an organized market there should be conservation and of course i was seeing that some scientist is interested in conservation of hill surface in this hugli bagirathi river i shall also request him to consider some other species along with hilsa so our genetic diversity will be maintained and then we will be able to do something for the entire fish population of the world there are many fish you know fishes either in the sweet water or in the brackish water or in the sea water in different depth in different layers they they are uh, they you know they habitate so we must consider those and uh, as a man of agriculture i can only request you to put these points in your priority so that uh, we will be able to save our fish species we'll, and then another thing is we should also see that our water should not be polluted that points also has to be taken care of nowadays to harvest good yield we spray insecticides pesticides fungicides herbicides in our field which ultimately drains out to the river or maybe in the in this in the sea shore also so some sort of um, precaution some sort of um, carefulness from our side should be should be undertaken so that we can really achieve this goal and with this i must thank you thank all of you and i wish a grand success of this seminar and whatever these lectures will be delivered i will request our students or whoever is responsible for that that they should make a proceedings of this seminar on world fisheries day celebration and then send the key points to icar or maybe the inland fisheries center at barakpur so that they can really come up with some new projects to conserve our species thank you all that's all thank you very much sir uh, it was uh, 
a very informative and uh, thank you very much for pointing out the vital points to protect our resources uh, in fisheries sector thank you very much again so uh, let's let's move to the technical session so today uh, we are having our honorable guest dr dibakar bhakto who is uh, area scientist in the division of estuaries fisheries division and uh, in icar central fisheries research institute barakpur he is having a dynamic research career as he worked with fish and selfish diversity stock assessment population dynamics fish biology fish and selfish breeding and almost more than 75 research articles has been published uh, with his name seven book chapters has been published and uh, these are full of information and uh, thank and he has a great contribution in the research area of fish resource management i'd like to request dr bhakto to deliver a speech on hilsa reservation and uh, please sir thank you very much yes uh, good morning everyone am i audible yes sir yes sir you are audible sir. yeah thanks and dr shorkar uh, for nicely introducing me so i i, I want to thank uh, our uh, honorable uh, vice chancellor and uh, dean school of agriculture and allied sciences for giving me the opportunity and inviting me uh, this uh, auspicious day and this uh, august gathering because and i i am thankful uh, to all the young uh, that uh, faculty members uh, especially personally i know all of them they are very much good they are just like my younger brother and sister and uh, uh, that they are doing a very nice uh, to the new university especially in the faculty of fisheries and i want to welcome uh, all the uh, this students because uh, i have seen that in this session too uh, there is lots of presentation by the students and everybody is evaluating that uh, how uh, they are going to perform or deliver their uh, this uh, experience or um, that uh, some kind of project type uh, uh, i i have to thanks uh, all the that uh, uh, that experts uh, those who work on the uh, department of fisheries Uh, i think they, they, they'll be uh, telling the real story uh, of the fisheries going on in the state of west bengal and uh, uh, maybe some kind of some fish farmers uh, entrepreneurs those who are uh, associated with us and uh, ladies and gentlemen uh, uh, very this good uh, good morning to everyone uh, on this auspicious day uh, 21st november world fisheries day as uh, dr shorkar already mentioned the importance of this day Uh, that uh, how uh, that uh, 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 all fisheries day has been uh, came in the existence uh, in our life uh, in uh, 1997 uh, that the first all fisheries forum has been formed uh, after that in uh, 2015 in delhi so we have to be very much proud that uh, uh, in uh, delhi 2015 21 november uh, uh, that uh, uh, all fishermen organization from there this all fisheries day has been started as our dean sir has already mentioned the sustainability of uh, that uh, fishery sector this is the main motto of the all fisheries day dear friends as you know that in the globe more than 120 million people are actively involved in fishery sector and out of them 97% are from the developing or under developed countries and 90% of them are mainly involved with the small scale fisheries so you know that small scale or additional fisheries is our main target and to protect to preserve this sector mainly this uh, world uh, fisheries day we are, we are celebrating so now that uh, and directly i am going to my that uh, because there is this time constraint uh, i'll be delivering my um, uh, this assign topic the silsha conservation in bhagirathi hubli river the threats uh, and uh, what will be the future plan is my this slide is visible 
Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. And uh, 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 this uh, additionally, I want to thank uh, to Shah sir because sir is very much concerned uh, about uh, fisheries uh, that uh, how we can conserve or preserve the threatened species. Sir, I want to mention that because since I am working in the safety for the last uh, uh, nine years, uh, before that uh, I have been working uh, some other uh, I said organization. So safety since inception, nineteen forty seven, we are working. in the inland open waters especially in the river estuary reservoir wetland uh, and uh, we, we are trying to conserve those species because our main mandates or main aim is to conserve the native species as you see the till today we are having 2800 so kind of pico anyway 2805 species in india all over freshwater brackish water and marine and out of these 279 comes under threatened category including all environments so cpt we have taken some kind of initiatives especially to conserve the species through artificial breeding and we are having a mega project on ornamental fish breeding so i want to know uh, i want to mention that uh, presently we have successfully breed two very very vulnerable ornamental fish one is chana blackery this is only available in the northeastern states especially in the assam this is the highest or costliest ornamental fish in india and recently we have breed pico kill metrognathus siamensis this is possible only under the guidance of my director and with the permission of him i am just uh, disclosing this one and uh, some kind of documentation also already made and we are trying to uh, come up with some kind of more certain and vulnerable species for the, uh, as a species diversification so as my topic has been assigned and the future conservation especially to the hugli bhagiruti as you know that ilsha is a crupi purmis for the students especially they, they might be knowing those who are associated with the fishery science <coughs> is the order crupi purmis and family crupidi uh, this is a highly migratory fish and uh, this is to uh, this uh, uh, considered as a anadroma fish the, there is some kind of migratory habits anadroma fish the species those is to migrate from the sea or from the marine environment or from the salt to the fresh water so if you see the uh, that uh, uh, distribution pattern of the hilsha in globe so you'll be seeing that hilsha especially available in the bay of bengal and arabian sea from the myanmar bangladesh india and up to the iran and it will be surprising that out of the total production of hilsha in the globe 85% is coming from alone from the bangladesh that's why the species also uh, declared as the national fish of bangladesh and the state fish of west bengal by seeing its contribution the species is contributing almost 1.2% of the national gdp of bangladesh that's why this species has kept as a national fish <coughs> 1.2% of gdp only a single species and in case of india the fishery sector whole fishery sea or hugli matra or we used to call this uh, lowest stress of sundarban or lowest stress of ganga why this hugli uh, this bhagiruti is so much of important that hugli bhagiruti uh, for the students uh, though they might be knowing this is also called as hugli matla or maybe uh, this ganga lower gangetic region or kati ganga because uh, this has been cut uh, uh, up from the farakka Uh, from the main ganga now that is why it is called also a kati ganga to so, hugli ba <coughs> hugli bhagiruti is uh, forming a lucrative fishery because due to its uh, uh, suitable environment and uh, uh, that you might be knowing that uh, we, we are having almost 295 km of stretch starting from the navadip uh, to the uh, lower of fresher gulf or bokkhali and uh, due to the saline breakish and fresh water region that uh, this a uh, highly migratory anadromous fish this to migrate from the sea uh, to the fresh water region mainly for the 
spawning purpose. Uh, we used to know that uh, spawning or maybe because there is a uh, time uh, this constant why Hilsha is so much of lucrative. As, as you know, this is also called as Machar Raja. Machar Raja Elish, we used to call it. Why? Because there is some kind of uh, this uh, especially fetish it, or, uh, or, or what we know, PA or uh, lots of fetish. Uh, scientists are saying that uh, lots of researchers, the species is so much of tasty, the species is so much of uh, flavored. And uh, for the Bengali people, this uh, is uh, almost it's, uh, uh, it's, uh, it's all kind of our uh, heritage fish. But uh, recently we have seen that the uh, is uh, uh, reduce <coughs> reducing day by day. And uh, if you see the production, uh, uh, this, is, this is the total production, and uh, this comes only from the fresh water, and uh, uh, th this is uh, from the marine. Uh, till 2001, directly reduced. Now, Hilsha, we are getting only from the British water or uh, marine environment. What may be the reason, or what may be the main 80,000 ton? Maybe now we are getting 21, 23, or uh, somewhat uh, 22, 25,000 tons. Uh, if you see the production trend of Ilsha in West Bengal, main uh, this uh, constant is construction of farak cabbages, and that is a very poorly constructed fish farm. That uh, uh, those uh, uh, that uh, they, they might be doing that uh, once that the Hilsha is to migrate up to Allahabad. And it's is to forming a major catch to the Arabad region. But due to the construction of Farak Kabiris, the hills, uh, the migratory route of, to the Indian region had <coughs> reduced drastically. And the species uh, now is to migrate more in Bangladesh region and not in the, uh, that our Ganga, that came as a Padma in Bangladesh, they used to migrate to mesh. We can protect on piece of uh, that uh, hills. Uh, that uh, and other point is overfishing. That uh, Hilsha used to migrate. I, I said that in case of uh, spawning or migration period, and Hilsha is having two migration uh, or sorry, two breeding season. One is in the monsoon, uh, southeast monsoon uh, starts from uh, June, uh, it's continue up to September, and one is another is uh, this uh, starting from uh, January to March. 90% of the Hilsha breeds during the monsoon, and uh, maybe 10% in the uh, winter season, and then. We are exploiting the brute fish and we are exploiting the juveniles. And siltation is one of the main, uh, another main factor, especially in the estuary mouth. Uh, for that, uh, the depth of the river or depth of the estuary is uh, reducing that hillsha, they can't migrate uh, properly. Pollution and the climatic may be uh, another reason. So, uh, whenever we are talking about a message regulation, uh, uh, there is uh, for the fisheries biologist uh, we are saying that uh, uh, there is uh, two kind of uh, this exploitation over uh, over exploitation is going on especially in the glee or any kind of uh, environment to catch the hillsha uh, one is the recruitment overfishing mainly we are catching the brute fish one is uh, um, juvenile overfishing or growth overfishing especially we are catching the juvenile or uh, below size fish small fish fry so um, we have starting uh, that uh, hillsha fishery in the Hooghly or uh, associated uh, estuary or river system uh, for the last 30 to 40 years. And uh, we have documented some kind of uh, in work for uh, uh, fishing activities of hillsha. So you can see uh, that we have given the look and label also. So we are not uh, reading those things. 12 gears is uh, actively involved, especially to catch hillsha as well, uh, small hillsha. Uh, for catching the adult hilsha, we are uh, using especially the uh, drift gill net. So this is uh, very much uh, common in every uh, uh, Other than this, we are using separian net, <coughs> cleft net, and uh, some kind of kunajal. Those, those are the local name. So why we are so much of concern? Uh, so uh, see, th this is a graph we have uh, this uh, designed on the basis of the guard length maximum body depth of the species. So we used to, we used to believe that, and a study also standardized that, Hilsha is to matured once they reached 350 to 500 gram. So this is our barrier. And uh, this, this is one kind of, uh, there's a recruitment overfishing, we are, uh, we are catching the brute fish, and uh, this is the growth overfishing. We are catching the uh, smaller size fishes.
so we have uh, uh, the other than some uh, that uh, uh, overfishing how how they have been uh, um, this, uh, occurring in the uh, the Hublima Tessuri. We have started this is our own case study. So we have found that especially in the lower states in uh, Frasher Gonz area uh, that uh, one troll they used to in the peak season they used to harvest 5.6 ton of hilsha. Sorry, 5.6 ton of total fish, and out of this, 3.2 ton. Uh, this only is hilsha, uh, almost 56 percent. And out of this, you can see different stages. We have seen the different stages means 6.4 percent in the fifth stage is highly matured one. 59 percent of the fish or fourth stage is maturing, and 26 percent is third stage. And the third stage is uh, based on their gonadal development. Means they are maturing, immature, mature, or push stage. So we want to study this one in the uh, fresher area. Other than this, uh, for uh, growth of fishing, means uh, to catch uh, the juveniles, there's uh, lots of net is involved. So starting from the back net, Siberian net, shooting net. Uh, this shooting net is uh, mainly used to, to catch mean, means uh, small fry, a leaf net, small mesh net, and uh, shin net. So for a juvenile catch, uh, we have uh, a river fishing, growth over fishing or juvenile fish must one, and this bag net. Uh, and this net is a uh, mess as you can see, starting from 2 mm, 5 mm, or maybe hardly to the 10 mm. Uh, this is the mouth and in, in case of cord end, you will be getting uh, mess as only 2 mm. Sometimes they used to maintain 5. How? Uh, th this is the 2 mm mess as how fish, uh, juveniles, they used to catch uh, by the green gel, means a bag net. <clears throat> so we have studied uh, in case of Gudakali region uh, that you might be knowing uh, that uh, uh, Gudakali is near to Bajbaz area that uh, Hilsha juveniles uh, in, in case of one haul of uh, that big net of the catch 25% of uh, 3 percent of the total catch. Oh, this is our own study. <coughs> so oh, what is the size range? 4.2 gram and uh, in case of length is uh, this uh, may be fry or uh, juvenile stages. Other than this, this binti or bag net, uh, there is uh, some kind of net uh, who's involved to destruction of uh, those uh, juveniles. This one is set period, we used to call it a uh, chorpata jal. See how this uh, chorpata jal uh, we are using, especially in the estuarine or brackish water region. And uh, we have started uh, that uh, how Hilsha is uh, contributing there. Uh, the size range is a little bit higher compared to the bag net because it's a potential uh, also uh, almost zero mesh net because such types of net is mainly made by uh, mosquito type of uh, net. Uh, and there also we found that hill shell length is contributing 47 to 78 mm only. And weight also only 1 to uh, 4.5 gram and average is 2.1 gram. And hill shell juveniles are uh, contributing 14 percent by the number and 13 0.9% by the weight of the total catch of that uh, short water zone in a single day. Uh, this is our own study. Uh, so you can see some kind of uh, pictorial that how this hills uh, juveniles is contributing by this uh, uh, short water zone. And uh, another is the shooting net. Though shooting net or mean jal, those uh, kind of net is uh, easing for the catch of uh, mean, means uh, the small uh, fry or spawn. And uh, such types of spawn we are uh, uh, distributing for the aquaculture. Mainly, this types of net is using for uh, uh, harvesting of the Macrobacium rosenbergii seed, or maybe they, uh, uh, this time uh, they are also collecting uh, this mallets, means parche, uh, this um, golio, Mr. Golio, uh, those seeds, uh, and Betki also. See this latest calcul calculifier. Uh, those uh, Hilsha seed is, is, is not the main targeted, but uh, this also. A, a form a accidental catch of this uh, minjal. Uh, so different kind of minjal, how this uh, farmers or uh, fishers uh, they are uh, collecting, uh, fight dragging, scooping, and a fixed net, uh, some kind of, of push net, uh, and uh, operated by uh, boat also. Uh, and uh, this uh, how this uh, hilsha juveniles uh, they are uh, catching. We have taken some kind of photograph, mm, uh, and uh, hilsha juveniles also catch uh, by that. Uh, uh, leaf net uh, operated from the um, boat. This is also called as a vetijal. And uh, see, uh, by weight, uh, 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 that we have seen that in case of Baranagar area, uh, Garden Ridge, uh, those side, uh, 
uh, on on our uh, the sampling day, we have found almost 89.5 percent of the weight is contributing only hilsha, especially in the post monsoon season. Uh, out of the hilsha, they used to uh, this uh, catch some other species, especially mallards and Cetiphina uh, pasha, this fire <coughs> fascia fish. So this is how this uh, through the bait is they are uh, this destructing uh, the hilsha juveniles. And comes to the now that the first gel or what is to call it the gill net, the maximum production of the hilsha or maximum yield are coming from the uh, this gill net only uh, in the estuarine and riverine. Uh, we are not talking about marine from you know that from marine environment uh, uh, troll net uh, and they are collecting them uh, this maximum number of uh, hilsha. So uh, this uh, size of the gill net is uh, starting uh, from 30, 40 mm. Uh, some sometimes it's reached up to 120 mm. So we have uh, started uh, some uh, in case of uh, different uh, region, Novadi, Balada, Trivini, Hooglygat, uh, uh, Russia. Uh, that uh, and we have uh, found that everywhere the hill juveniles is catching less than 100 gram or uh, less than 100 mm in size. This is our main scope concern. So uh, that in case of uh, some uh, that uh, daily newspaper also that uh, a, a lots of uh, it will be getting lots of article on Hilsha that need be charek pukai list And it, it's not only 50 crore because uh, we, are, we have published uh, lots of uh, this uh, socio-economic related paper at uh, free uh, from our economic section. It is more than 50 crore, maybe maybe 500 crore. Uh, that uh, how we are destructing the hilsha juveniles. If they reach to the uh, adult or uh, table size, uh, you know, we may get, uh, we, we, we are not uh, losing uh, 500 um, crore. So, so what may be the main reason? Is the reason that uh, how hilsha is destructing is the reason of uh, net or gears or is the reason of fishers or we are the human being? Because every kind of gears, this all passive or maybe active gears, they needs some kind of mechanism to operate. And we are the human, those who are operating those nets. So we are responsible for destruction of some kind of uh, hilsha, maybe in the juvenile stage, maybe in the immediate stage. So what, what we should do, as uh, all of you know, that especially with the biologists, uh, there, there is some kind of fishing ban is going on in India. Uh, one is in the West Coast, for the two months and in coast also two months. In case of East Coast, it's starting from 15th April and it will continue for 16 days. And West Coast also, it was uh, it is uh, almost uh, 61 days. But if you see the fishing ban in case of East Coast, coast it is starting from 15th April. And uh, surprisingly, the main fishing ban, uh, sorry, fishing spawning uh, period of Hilsha is starting from June. Once the fishing ban is uplifted by the department, and how Bangladesh is still now pioneer in Hilsha, they are observing fishing ban not only for two months; they are observing fishing ban for four months, and they are observing this ban in the peak breeding season of the species. So, what should be our main conservation plan? There should be equal or equal amount of fishing ban and it should start for both the countries in, in Bangladesh and India. Seems this is a single stop. Uh, some, kind, uh, some kind of study, uh, they, they are mentioning that uh, Ilsha also have a subset of uh, stock, especially uh, those fishes is coming from Bangla, uh, say Padma River, but it is it to be established. And we used to, we used to that, uh, find that the species may be coming from Bangladesh, maybe Myanmar, India, Iran, there is the single stock. So there's their breeding habits, their feeding habits, everything is almost same. So we should follow the fishing ban period almost same time along with the Bangladesh. And uh, uh, you've been seeing that uh, in case of gadgeted notification of the government of West Bengal, uh, they, they have uh, come some kind of uh, that uh, um, management measures based on our study or uh, different uh, research activities uh, from the ICR Institute, NGO, uh, maybe the, that uh, West Bengal University of Animal and Fisheries Science, they are also doing lots of uh, uh, research activities, not only this species, other species. So time to time, they used to keep some kind of recommendation to the state government. 
and they have come up with some kind of uh, uh, restrictive measures that the fishers they should not use any kind of gill net less than 90 mm because we see we have seen that as i mentioned that hilsha they used to measure once they reach 350 gram so if we use more than 90 mm uh, gill net so we will be getting the hilsha more than 350 gram in weight and especially in case of scoop net gill net or uh, sorry bag net and leaf net the mass size should be less than uh, greater than 25 mm and we should not uh, catch, we should not buy, we should not sell the Hilsha if it is less than 23 mm. This is the West Bengal Gazette notification uh, summarized uh, form. So, other than this, what we can do? See, uh, our uh, this uh, Bhagiruti system uh, is uh, this Ugly system is starting from Faraka. So, we studied that there is some kind of deep pool where Hilsha they used to migrate more. And there is a lot of water. They used to breed more, especially Faraka uh, and uh, in, in this down, uh, it's a, uh, this uh, extending five to ten kilometer. They used to congregate or aggregate for breeding. Another uh, area is Kanla to Hukli Ghat and Diamond Harbor to Nichintapur, this uh, 10 11 kilometer. So those area can be uh, that kept as a protected area. So as you know that we are having some kind of protected area for uh, tiger is a forest in the Sundarban and birds a protected area like that for the Hilsha, the government should uh, that uh, announce those area as a sanctuary. There should not be any kind of fishing activities in those area. If not, uh, this coal may be partial for four or six months. Once Hilsha is to breed in the monsoon season and up to uh, the reaching to the that's the uh, advanced fingerling uh, maybe up to December January there should not be any fishing activity in this area. Uh, this is our study. So uh, other than this, uh, that uh, as this is a highly migratory fish and they enter to the fresh water for breeding, uh, we have to maintain enough fresh water from the upstream, especially in the breeding season. If there is no rain, is there is no uh, that. Uh, the monsoon or there is no enough uh, that we should release the uh, fresh water from the up, upstream and we should ban fishing since uh, Faraka berries they used to congregate uh, um, for migration uh, up to five kilometer below uh, there sh we should not allow them and uh, time to time we should study the stock of the species all over in fresh water, brackish water and uh, marine uh, environment. And uh, initiatives uh, has to be taken uh, from the both the state uh, NGO uh, and uh, central government uh, kept breeding. And uh, for the last five six years, uh, there is a, a mega project, six seven institute, um, ICR institute, and the state uh, agriculture university. They are trying to breed the, uh, uh, this hilsha in kept condition. And somewhat we have um, this uh, um, succeed. Uh, that we can breed the species in uh, captive condition, but uh, the ma main problem is the uh, surviving. The survival rate is uh, very less. Uh, after breeding, we have uh, this released uh, those uh, offspring, uh, those who might be knowing, and the Sifa, we are uh, that Sifa uh, Rohora, Sifa uh, Kollani, there are some kind of tankies there, and Sifa that, uh, uh, that uh, Kakdip, and uh, some kind of uh, private farm also. Also, the main problem is survivability. We are give, getting uh, very much less survivability and even growth also. Uh, we have started in some kind of a private farm that within a period of uh, two years, uh, the hillshack can grow only up to 500 grams. Though it, it will be very much uh, interested to know that their taste, their flavor is almost the same. Uh, those who are getting from the uh, this natural environment and kept in condition. Uh, uh, there, there is no any compromise on the test, but main problem is growth and survivability. And other than this, this problem, they are working for the hills conservation, a uh, Bay of Bengal uh, large marine ecosystem. So they have studied, they are studying uh, in Indo, Bangla and Myanmar region. So they have uh, given some kind of um, management measures that uh, now, what's the fishing pressure is going on in Indian, uh, uh, especially in uh, West Bengal? We should reduce the fishing pressure at least 24 percent. 
it's like that if we are using 100 fishing board we should use less 24 means we should use 76 this is the study of problem uh, they are the sole uh, authority who are mainly working on uh, bay of bengal program and anyhow we should not allow or use uh, that gill net if it is less than 90 mm in size other than this we have to building uh, lots of awareness or motivational camp to the farmers and uh, we are talking about uh, that fishing ban this two months or four months or three months but uh, uh, simultaneously we have to think that uh, what we can give alternatively those the fishers who is actively involved in fishing activities if there is a uh, some kind of fishing ban they will be losing their job uh, they, they, they will be going for fishing activities once uh, in several time uh, personally I, I talked with lots of fishers those who are involved in the especially hilsha they, 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 they said that sir uh, we only know fishing other than fishing we can't do anything so the government as uh, both state and central uh, they should give uh, some kind of aid or uh, some kind of uh, financial uh, benefits to those uh, two or four months uh, if they are not going for any kind of uh, fishing activities and uh, and more research uh, uh, we should do more research about the spawning ground when it's spawning behavior, uh, stock assessment uh, and as i mentioned uh, some identified area should come after as a sanctuary or uh, as a bio reserve uh, so that uh, or marine protected area uh, so that uh, any kind of fishing especially of this species in the peak breeding uh, period and post uh, spawning because they, they need some kind of time uh, to grow uh, all kind of fishing activities should be banned. Uh, thank you, everyone, uh, for, for uh, kind listening. And uh, once again, I I want to thank uh, to the uh, organizer uh, to uh, giving me uh, this opportunity uh, to speak this August gathering. Uh, and I I am very much uh, thankful uh, to the uh, honourable vice chancellor, dean, and faculty members, and especially to the students. Uh, uh, for uh, kind listening. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, thank you. Thanks a lot, sir. It was an information packed presentation, and uh, I must thank you for finding some time uh, between your busy schedule and accepting our invitation. And I must say that those information and research out outcomes are very much useful for us as well as for our students. So thanks again. And uh, I hope in future our students will get your, uh, get to uh, know some more information and they will communicate, they will get the opportunity to communicate with uh, you. So thank you very much, sir. I hope uh, in future we'll get uh, some more interaction about this, about conservation of uh, different resource managements. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Shortar. If uh, students or uh, any participants uh, want to know anything, uh, not only related to Hilsha or anything, uh, so they can ask, or if there is a time constraint, we can discuss this later on uh, in the panel discussion or uh, time. Thank you. Sure, sir. Sure, sir. Thank you, sir. So let's move to the uh, next session, uh, next program. So uh, I want to uh, say something that uh, we are very much familiar to the term that charity begins at home. But uh, here I'm not going to say it is as charity. I will say more about, I, I can say it is as duty. So so like that, uh, how as West Bengal is right now, we are in West Bengal and West Bengal is our home. And two of our honorable guests is working in the uh, state government of fisheries. And they're serving their home, and that way they're contributing in the country and finally to the world fisheries community. So we are having Mr. Borun Kumar Paul and Mr. Shubhendu Haldar, who is uh, both of them working as fishery extension officer in the state fisheries uh, West Bengal. And they are directly supporting the backbone of the fisheries community, the fish farmers. They are helping them to develop. So I must thank them. And uh, I'd like to request Mr. Borun Kumar Paul, Fishery Extension Officer, who is uh, posted in Krishnagar to Development Block, Nodia, West Bengal. And uh, he is going to give us some idea that how the socioeconomic upliftment can be done through fishermen's cooperative societies. 
So please, sir, enlighten us uh, with uh, your speech. Dr. Thank Dr. you very much. Dr. Sarkar, I would, yes. I, I, I would like to request, actually, since it yes. was a very good presentation by uh, Dr. Bhakta. Yes, sir. And yes, sir. Uh, it was very interesting topic. Okay, our students must be having some queries. And since Dr. Bhakta is also available, okay, he offered himself. Uh, can we ask one or two questions or uh, give opportunity to the students? Yes, sir. Yes, sure, sir. So, if time permits, I, I think that will be uh, really good. Yes, sir. If yes, sir. Yes, 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 sir. I request uh, all the students, actually, I request all the students, please ask some questions. Actually, this is very nice presentation, actually. So, I request all the fishery students, please ask some questions that is available here. Please ask some questions. Sir, you are mute, sir. Uh, Dr. Bhakti, you are mute, sir. Uh, my dear students, uh, see this uh, use uh, as uh, our uh, Dean said mentioned uh, this uh, new college, new and this faculty, but your faculty is very much young, and I personally know all of them, and they are doing very much fantastic. And I believe that uh, you people will excel uh, uh, tremendously in your future, especially when it's come to the JRF or uh, any kind of competitive exam. So, uh, as a scientist of CIPRI, we are always there to help you. So, if you want to know anything, not only Hilsha conservation or related to fishery, your career and announcement, you can ask. You, you can ask now itself. You can uh, chat in the chat box. You, you can mail me as as I've given my mail ID. I've given my phone or WhatsApp number. Uh, so, you are free See, because we are ready to give you any kind, any kind of this uh, suggestion or we are ready to guide you. So, related to fishery, West Bengal fishery, uh, especially I'm working in uh, this uh, estuary and uh, river and division. So anything you can ask or we can discuss in the last also, I, I'll be available since today Sunday, uh, there is a problem. And uh, I, I actually, I love to see all of you personally, since there is some kind of uh, students activities, uh, even cultural program. So if time permits and uh, this uh, situation becomes normal, I think uh, with the permission of our honorable, uh, this uh, your uh, vice chancellor sir and dean sir, in near few, sir, uh, we'll see it on day in face to face, sir. Many, many thanks, actually, Dr. Bhakta, for offering your services. Uh, and this will be immensely beneficial for our students. Okay, uh, students, I am sure you can ask one or two questions. If anybody having any uh, problem with the mic, they can uh, write it down in the chat box as well. Okay. Uh, Dr. Bhatta. Anyway, sir, yeah. let, them, let them think, sir. We can discuss the letter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Dr. Bhatta, I have, I have a general query. Uh, I have a general query that uh, uh, Hilsa conservation is very important aspect, topic, definitely. Okay. But imposing some kind of fishing ban uh, may not be an economically viable proposition, okay, because it concerns uh, or uh, associated with the livelihood of many or several people, okay. So we need to work on other alternatives, probably. Uh, I, I think enormous research possibilities uh, must be there, okay, um, uh, is, uh, merely looking towards government that when they will impose a kind of ban or uh, if Bangladesh has done, we also need to do. Other than that also, can you throw some light on other other, other possibilities that are possible or that maybe uh, you are working currently at uh, CIFRI? Yeah, I sincerely acknowledge your concerns, sir, especially that Hilsha, doctor, because we are uh, so much of involved with this species, especially the Bengali. Sir, uh, that's why, sir, I, I that is going 2015 with the six ICR Institute and some fisheries university and our West Bengal University of Animal and Fisheries Science also a stakeholder. We are trying to breed this species in captive condition because as you know that we have already succeeded 
to breed lots of species, not only freshwater, even breakwater. breakwater. That uh, we have uh, successfully breed obia. That uh, we may not uh, think in uh, that uh, past. We have successfully breed uh, latest calicate but vetki matsar. So we have successfully fish, channel channels. So uh, our trial is going on because as I mentioned, that this is only the oh, why giving the example of Bangladesh. If you can uh, look back uh, six to seven to the Bangladesh, uh, their Hilsha fishery also almost collapsed because due to the over expedition. After that, Bangladesh came to the fishing well for four months, not only two months or one month. There are so much still. So, on to conserve, conserve or protect the species at present until we succeed fully artificial breeding. There is no alternative of this fish when uh, GDP is uh, 1.2 percent is contributing this species. They are uh, sending uh, fish to West Bengal, not only West Bengal, all the northeastern state. How is possible only for this uh, fishing ban and stick monitoring? What they to do? They used to follow four tire uh, this uh, protection. Means they are not allowing anybody to catch. Second, they are not allowing anybody to carry these species. Third, they are not allowing anybody to sell. And lastly, they are not allowing anybody to buy. So they are strictly monitoring. And only those monitoring only that they have succeeded. So if we are not a little bit strict, because of why that Shahasar also mentioned earlier. Uh, we are uh, talking why we are talking about uh, so much of uh, threatened or vulnerable species. Yeah, as I mentioned, that we are having now near about 279 vulnerable or threatened species. So, should we wait for that hill shell so on to become vulnerable or threatened? For that, we have to be strict. We have to be strict in any reason and any. And that's why I have mentioned to some kind of aid or financial benefit to those. Fishers, those actively involved in only hillsha fishing. In case of Bangladesh, 4.5 lakh fishers involved in hillsha fishing. In case of West Bengal, it is very less, not uh, like that. Maybe 15 or 20,000. So we can give some kind of uh, financial benefit because, uh, as you know, that uh, our uh, Honorable Prime Minister uh, last year they have given some kind of Motsha Samriti Juzana near about 22,000 crore. Why should not we uh, divert, uh, divert some fund uh, to? Uh, those uh, to the fishers. So my my submission will be sir until we succeed fully in artificial breeding like other species, there is no alternative. We have to be strict in message regulation and ban. Thank you, sir. Sir, uh, one of our student, I think uh, he wants to know something. Shion, are you here? Shion. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir, you may ask, please. Sir, the management measures that's uh, taken by CIFRI, if you could sir, say something on that, sir. In case of management, uh, in case of uh, Shion, uh, it's, uh, it's a very good question, since you are also aware of that species. Especially in case of CIFRI, we run two projects. Mm, for uh, Hilsha, one is under NMCG, uh, National Mission for Clearing Gonga, or uh, is, uh, So, what we should do, see, uh, still now we have raised more than 15,000 Hilsha juvenile. What we should do, we used to catch Hilsha juvenile from the downstream and we have to release up the Farakka. One thing that we are doing regular basis, we used to tag Hilsha to see their migration pattern. And it will be knowing that uh, Hilsha, one Hilsha species can migrate 61 kilometer in a day. This is the, some kind of uh, research that they are saying that 59 to 61 kilometers. So this tagging process is going on. And uh, continuously under, under NMCG, we are collecting live Hilsha from the downstream and we are releasing it to the upstream. And Thirdly, in uh, uh, Boragar, Budakali, 
and in Kulaghat, we have taken uh, some uh, pond, special pond, and uh, we are uh, trying to breed uh, his artificially um, with the support of SIFA, uh, Central Indian Fisheries uh, Freshwater Aquaculture, SIFA, British Water Aquaculture, CIP. So th this, uh, this process is going on, uh, not uh, last three years, from the last five, six years. So let's see, I think one day we'll succeed. Not only India, the Bangladesh also, they are also trying. Uh, they are also trying to that, uh, standardize the breeding process of Hilsha. Thank you, Sharon. Thank you, sir. Sudeshna, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. May I ask him a question rather to Dr. Bhakta? Yes, sir. Yes, you... sir. Dr. Bhakta, can you hear me? Very much, sir. Please, sir, continue. Okay. Thank you for very much for your elaborate talk. I have one request to you that this year our students is in the third year. Next year they will be sitting for their ICAR, Junior Research Fellowship Examination. I want your positive support to guide our students, to encourage our students, and if necessary, if you can come and visit our institute. This is one thing. Second thing, can we do something, since you said this is an anachronous species, can we do something so that the movement of Hilsha fish from the Bay of Bengal, as you said that more fishes are migrating to Padma River and Bangladesh, can we do something that they will migrate, migrate to our state instead of going to that side? Is there any mechanism or there any policy so that we can have a good harvest of fish? Uh, yes, sir. <laughs> very much, sir. <laughs> Means, uh, I'm hard to say, since, since it is question. Uh, one of my point I have mentioned uh, that uh, siltation is the main problem, sir. If you see river mouth, if you visit the uh, uh, sorry, Bokkhali, Prashar Gons, so those side, uh, even uh, uh, Matla, especially the Matla region, uh, siltation is the main problem, sir. So, Hilsha, because uh, if you call them, they won't listen us. First, they will follow. They need some kind of deeper water. Uh, they need a continuous flow of fresh water. So, desiltation, desiltation is the one, one and only that uh, the solution, sir. So, if government uh, they do, they can do some kind of desiltation in the river mouth, especially in the river mouth, and especially in the breeding period, uh, there is a continuous uh, fresh water flow. The, as you know that, uh, that, that uh, Hukli is a freshwater estuary because it's a positive estuary. And there is a continuous flow and this flow should continue even in the, uh, the peak breeding season also. So because why they are migrating to the Padma, they are getting enough uh, fresh water. That's, they're, they're, that's, why, that's why they are changing their migration. So if we can assure that there will be a continuous flow, there will be enough depth, they, they will migrate definitely. And regarding that, uh, the support, sir, I am always there because uh, that uh, Shodeshna, Shodeshna is there, Shibom is there, that uh, Devashmita is there. I know everybody personally. They also know very much personally. I think Onimesh is there, Siddharth is there, your, uh, that very young and energetic uh, faculty member. So, and uh, they are also very much uh, personally um, in touch with me. So, I, I am always there to help, sir, uh, in my capacity. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, Dr. Bhakta. Now, we'll be looking forward for your help. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you uh, very much, sir. As uh, uh, in future, I think uh, I, th I think this discussion could go for uh, hour and hour. That will not be finished because we are having lots of uh, time uh, queries. So uh, due to some constraint of the time limit, uh, we will be moving to the next program. And uh, we hope in future we will meet in person and I'll, I'd like to request, uh, with the permission of uh, uh, Professor S.K. Kothari, that uh, our Honorable Dean, that uh, uh, Dr. Bhokto could uh, take some classes of our students that will be, uh, uh, th that way that can be clear, their uh, queries uh, could be clear, because in this short period, maybe it is not enough for our students to know everything. So thank you very much. And uh, let's move to the next, next program uh, as our Honorable uh, Next speaker, our guest, Mr. Borun Kumar Pal, who is uh, serving as Fishery Extension Officer in Kishnago 2 Development Block, Nodia, and he will be discussing about the socio-economic upliftment of fisher folks through fishermen's cooperative societies in Nodia District, West Bengal. Thank you very much, uh, sir.
uh, for your time and uh, i'd like to request you to start your speech thank you very much sir could you please unmute yourself uh, mr paul uh, could, sir could you please unmute yourself we can't listen you we can't Hello? hear you sir. yes sir now it is fine sir okay okay uh, first of all i would like to uh, thank uh, vc sir uh, dean sir uh, the neutu university department of fishery science school of agriculture and allied, allied science as well as i would like to thank uh, sudeshna she is my junior as well as uh, devosmita is there and uh, shivam uh, all of my junior and as well as uh, the students of uh, this university uh, it's my pleasure uh, that uh, the neutu university selected me as a guest lecturer on this auspicious day this is the uh, world fishery is there uh, i am uh, now servicing for the department of fisheries west bengal as a fishery extension officer and uh, i am working as a grassroots level uh, with uh, the fishery sector uh, of this uh, uh, of this state now uh, i am like to uh, discuss my topic that is the socio economic upliftment of uh, fisher folk to fisherman cooperative society in the district of nodia as uh, all you know uh, that the fish is a good source of protein which has a significant role uh, in ensuring food security in 31st century uh, as the global population is increasing rapidly there is an urge to need the increase of production of fish and other aquatic edible animals for feeding the large number of people throughout the world Uh, next slide please uh, next uh, uh, it is a uh, next slide next slide uh, uh, first of all uh, the topic is uh, the fisherman cooperative society uh, as all we know that uh, the fisherman mainly is from the weaker section of this society uh, and our uh, west bengal there is two type of fisheries is there one is cultured fishery and one is captured fisheries and the cooperative society is mainly based on this kind of captured fisheries and it is mainly based on the fisheries that is called the bill fishery because most of the cooperative society is uh, having a bill and their livelihood mainly depends on the fisheries that is come from the bill so a cooperative society is an autonomous association of person united voluntarily to meet their common economic social cultural needs and uh, actually this kind of fishermen uh, previously they are uh, fishing in the river as well as in the bill and what uh, they have got from there they are selling in the market and uh, thus they are uh, continuing their livelihood but uh, nowadays Uh, these kind of bills are actually uh, deteriorating day by day mainly the siltation and there is no scale there is no space uh, for fishing for this kind of fishermen so they are coming together for the formation of a cooperative societies uh, because this is the only way uh, to uh, improve their socio economic condition uh, next slide actually they are uh, the weaker section of the society due to low income they usually borrow money from the fish merchant at high rates of interest others there is a various circle of uh, uh, people uh, these people are mainly engaged in fishery but formation of cooperative society can solve all the problems of the fisherman in different countries and in different countries have this kind of cooperative societies working uh, all around the world for the socio economic development of uh, the fishermen uh, the history of uh, formation of cooperative society uh, 
uh, as all you know the modern cooperative society has its roots in england when it started in 1844 and in india the first fishermen cooperative society uh, began in the year of 1913 uh, in maharashtra and the first fishermen cooperative society is uh, karla matsher cooperative society in maharashtra and the second state is west bengal uh, west bengal is the second state uh, organize a cooperative society in 1918 uh, from that time these cooperative societies are working for uh, fisheries a function of cooperative society uh, the main function of the cooperative societies is that providing financial loan to the fishermen as and when they need actually this kind of fisherman cooperative society can act as a bank for the fishermen making available banking facilities for receiving financial deposits transport processing storage and sales of fish gases all the cooperative societies that is an uh, that is a fill a fish selling center that is called arot and the propagation and conservation of fish resource on scientific lines our department is working basically in this section uh, because there is an over exploiting there is an over catches in the uh, uh, bills uh, so we are trying to convert Uh, this kind of practice uh, to stop this kind of practice, and we are trying to uh, initiate a scientific culture in these kind of bills and uh, how uh, hows uh, and the big rivers, uh, big water bodies. Establishment of facilities and supply of goods necessary for the fishers. Uh, activities for prevention of disaster, disaster relief, and boat insurance. Activities for education and. they mention dissemination of information related to fisheries so these are the uh, cooperative society these are the functions of the cooperative society now the organizational structure of the fisherman cooperative society in its west bengal mainly that is three tier uh, system one is an apex federation at the state level which is called the bain fish uh number 2 is central fisherman cooperative society it is in the district level and these cooperative societies is actually control all the cooperative societies in the block level as well as in the village level and uh there is a uh, and the primary fisherman cooperative societies it is at the uh, block level uh, rather it is called it is in the village level uh the people or the fisherman Uh, lives in a village they are come together to form this kind of societies cooperative society which is called the primary fisherman cooperative society and it is the backbone of all the two types of uh, cooperative society as uh, the central fisherman cooperative society is mainly uh, formed with the member of the primary fisherman cooperative society and in nodia district Uh, there is a uh, lot of fishermen cooperative societies uh there is one cfcs that is central fishermen cooperative society and the three types of cooperative societies there a category uh, cooperative society the number is 39 a b category fishermen cooperative society the number is 31 and c category uh, cooperative societies the number is 27 that is total 97 fishermen cooperative societies that is in the district of nodia why abc uh, it is actually based on it is actually uh, this category uh, categorization is actually based on uh, the net profit production uh, as well as the activities uh, the uh, uh, cooperatives uh, taken and the total area of uh, around Uh, 7760 hectare uh, i am repeating 7760 hectare water bodies the fisherman cooperative society is working these huge under this huge uh, water uh, resources uh, 